feminist icon that I stand. There were so many quotes in this book that I was just like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mark, 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 because she is an icon and I stand an icon, okay? Highly recommend Evelyn Hugo. It's beautifully written. I thought it was very refreshing. And Taylor's style, I think she might become one of my favorite authors, you know, because every book I've read of hers, so Daisy Jones and Seven Husbands, has been complete and utter fire. And it's been very fresh and very different from what I've read on the market, the YA market before. And I do stand. Um, I didn't really care for um, Monique. But, um, yeah, I could tell that I understood that she was important for the story and the direction in which the story was going in. So, okay. Then next book i read in july was dumpling by julie murphy so obviously i read i watched actually i watched dumpling on netflix a few months ago and i loved it so much dumpling was what sierra burgess wished it could be but it never could be the same way i said that fix her up was what 50 shades tried to achieve and it couldn't get there okay dumpling is basically about this big girl I don't like saying, I usually say flappy girls, but yeah, it's about this big girl, and there's this, uh, her mum's like a beauty queen, you know, she won this beauty pageant back day, and they're from Texas, and this beauty pageant, because they live in quite a small town, this beauty pageant is still a very prominent thing, it's what their, t their town is known for, basically, and anyway, Dumpling decides to enter the beauty pageant so she can say F you to the status quo and yeah there's this love interest there's a love triangle and i really i must say it was very refreshing to read a love triangle in which both people equally wanted the big girl like the power that has the implications that has i gave dumpling four out of four stars on goodreads although i'm not gonna lie i actually think i did enjoy the movie more than the book which is quite shocking for me, I know, because it's usually the other way around. But there was just certain aspects of the movie that I thought was done better than in the book, even though I really enjoyed the book. And obviously, I'm not the slimmest girl, so it's quite relatable to me, and it resonated with me quite deeply. And I obviously loved it a lot, like, I really did like it, but I did prefer the film by Miles. The next book I read in July was Trouble at Racial High by Megan Brandy, which is the second book in the Brayshaw series. And the first book is called, I think it's called Boys of Brayshaw High. Okay, the first word that comes to mind, the first thing that I think of when thinking of this series is the ghetto, because this book is actually, the, like, it was so ghetto, like, I can't it's literally the ghetto obviously i can't explain too much about this book because it's the second book in the series and if you do end up reading it i don't want to spoil it for you but let's say there's this girl called raven yeah and her mom is a prostitute and i don't mean she's a a, a hoe or whatever because we sexually liberated around here i mean her mom is quite literally a prostitute she's a deadbeat mom she never looked after raven and you know so raven gets shipped off to this kind of cool foster home in the town where the Brayshaws reign. Now, the Brayshaws are one of the founding families of said town, and they're these boys, they're teenagers, and they basically run this town. They are the Brayshaws and they run this town because their dad, Head Brayshaw, is locked up in prison right now. You see, are you getting to understand why this book is the ghetto? Okay. So yeah, they run this town like they are the elites. They are top dogs, right? Like, you wanna move up in this town in this world you want to be on the good side of the brayshaws anyway raven is just like raven doesn't raven does what she wants basically she's a bad bee she don't listen to anybody she's just like can you f off like you can't tell me what to do so naturally the brayshaws are just like she's come here and she's threatening our reign and she's just like uh, okay they're like we're not gonna have it and she's like okay well i'm not gonna have you bully me like don't even try it okay and then there's a power struggle and she raven just basically gets sucked into this madness and they get sucked into raven's madness and it's all mad these books are addictive i don't think you understand as soon as i finished this um the first book i bought the second book on ebook and i was reading 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 it was mad like by the end of the second book i was like <laughs> shocked 
literally shocked like i couldn't believe it i found out about this series from little wolf reads now she's my owner reads i believe but yeah i saw it on her goodreads i was like what you reading girl that you had such a reaction so i decided to pick up myself and all my days it's madness it's really addictive they're really quick like you fly through them because you want to know what's going down like there's so much drama in it the sex scenes are very raunchy i really wasn't expecting the smart to be that deep but i do really enjoy it even though i would say there's some problematic slash controversial aspects of the book i don't think it was too controversial that you can be like <laughs> hold on whoa <laughs> and you can't read it at all for me personally it was just like hmm, that's a bit that's not me but i still did really enjoy the book the next book i read was actually a graphic novel and that was murder mysteries by neil gaiman gave it like a three out of five stars basically it's about lucifer morning star satan and it was all about his rise and fall in heaven and why he basically chose to forsake god and leave the angel god i don't believe this but no <laughs> it was really interesting um it explored some really good themes like love vengeance greed like etc etc and i did really enjoy it it was quite a quick easy read um i thought it was interesting you know and yeah that was it really read it because i didn't feel like reading words but i wanted to read still the next book i read was also a kind of graphic well it was a picture book and it was called first snow by bomi park and i gave it three out of five stars on goodreads again there's nothing much to this one really it's in the title it was about the first snow <laughs> um it's for children and there wasn't a lot of dialogue in this book but the illustrations were to die for they were so beautiful so cute and i really enjoyed it it was a quick read again i flew through it like this it was very quick the next book i read was actually the truth pixie um it's part of a series but i only read that one because i feel like it's a series but they're all standalones so you don't have to have read the other books to read this this was by matt haig i actually gave this one four out of five stars i really enjoyed it it's basically about this pixie and again it's in the name she tells the truth like she cannot lie but this has resulted in her having no friends because it's not like she just can't lie about serious things like Twilight, tell me the truth did you steal that money from the bank i love you baby but not like that your love ain't never paid my bills or put no clothes on my yeah. back she has she cannot lie even about the most trivial of things like you know those little white lies we probably all tell to like um help you know save our family's feelings our friends you know so they don't feel bad she cannot tell those lies and so she has no friends and like so it's led to her being like really sad and depressed and she feels like no one's ever gonna like her it was actually proper cute and the reason i gave this four out of five stars is that even though i'm 19 i'm gonna be 20 next year I still really enjoyed the message of this book basically and it was basically just saying that no matter how alone you feel or how different you think you are you're always going to eventually find someone that will accept you for yourself and most importantly you should always accept you for yourself um and it was a cute message also about morals and stuff like that whatever it was just proper cute the next book i read in july was again another graphic novel by ben aaron i can't pronounce his last name but i'll put it on the screen i gave this four out of five stars on goodreads i found this one really interesting it was a fun read and there's black protagonist and um the female protagonist is actually a muslima she wears like a hijab and i really like that and then the, the male protagonist is obviously just a black man and i think they work for the mi5 or something like they work for you know mi5 by the way is the equip um the british equivalent to the secret service or their fbi or whatever in america so yeah but yeah i really enjoyed it it was just kind of cool again have a quick read easy that's why i read next book i read in july was the kiss thief by lj xian again this was another book i found because of my own reads i gave this book a four out of five stars this book took me on such a wild ride bro at certain points i was just like nah no 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 so this book is about this uh, girl, she's 19 years old, woman rather, her name's Francesca and her father is like one of these big crime families so he's like a mafia don 
and she has been engaged her whole life everyone around her thinks she's gonna be engaged to this guy called Angel, um, Angelo Bandini you know she's in love with him or whatever and everyone knows they're gonna get together whatever cool and then one day her dad's like haha ha, ha, ha. <laughs> pack your bags you're going to marry Senator Wolf Keaton and she's like who who because Senator Wolf Keaton is a dickhead like he is a prick like and she hates his guts and she's basically forced into this arranged marriage even though she don't want him she wants angelo crime there's politics there's drama there's romance there's forbidden romance there's family drama like there's all sorts of stuff going on in this book i had some problems with this book I didn't like the age gap between Francesca and a certain love interest who I'm not going to name because I don't want to spoil it. Uh, I just had a few problems with this book in it. But all in all, I did enjoy it. Francesca can be... Certain people... I know certain people find her annoying. I don't find her annoying. I think she's just very impulsive, which makes sense. She's still quite young or whatever but i i found her funny like i think she's very dramatic and i'm kind of dramatic myself which is why i like her um and i just like that uh she doesn't take nonsense but you know she has her own ways of protesting and making it known that she does not agree with certain things which i really enjoy i didn't like the ending because it's very stereotypical and happy and i just feel like it deviates from a certain character's expressed desires i don't like when characters randomly switch up quick like that and they're just like oh no but because i love you i'm gonna i'm gonna change my waist and i'm gonna skibbity screw screen shut up like whatever cool but i did overall enjoy it the next book i read in july was homegoing by ya gayasi this was actually a gift for my 18th birthday last year from my friend mary and i finally read it and i gave it three stars it was quite a hard read for me um I, i'm not going to read it again i will probably never read it again just because it wasn't enjoyable just because of the premise of the book so it's about two sisters one is sold into slavery and one is forced to marry um a slave trader's a slave trader basically and it follows their journey and their family's journey so the generations that come after them um it was very painful it, yeah it was very painful i would say and for that reason i won't read it again because i don't believe in putting myself through unnecessary pain and making myself purposely angry i feel like i've read enough books like this i've watched enough movies like this so it's kind of painful it was well written though and yeah and the final books there are three but it's part of the series that i read in july were the love sisters trilogy by christina c jones i spoke about this in my romance recommendations video before and so that includes i think i might want you i think i might love you i think i might need you i love these books i love these sisters i love them like i just love the romances with each sister and their you know their bulls i really did love these books i gave i think all of them five stars just because of how much i enjoyed reading them um who's my favorite love sister i don't know i love them all for very different reasons but i think christy and the cj is going to be a new favor of mine because i like her how she writes romance that not all of her romances between characters look the same but that's it guys those are the 18 books i read in july i'm sorry if my energy is low it's like 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night right now and i'm so tired but i really wanted to get this video out for you guys or whatever thank you so much for watching like comment guys talk to me i want to talk to you okay comment subscribe my social media is in my bio connect with me message me whatever let's be friends come again soon i post videos whenever i'm gonna be posting a video a week now as you can see this video is actually early and yeah i'm so looking forward to talking to you guys again soon see you in my next one bye